Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. Amen? Good night, Christian friends. Good night, neighbors. Has God been good to you today? I know that he has, and it's such a wonderful time, wonderful privilege that we have to be here again to worship him in this end time gospel series. I want to acknowledge those of you who are joining us online on our YouTube channel just now. You are at the right place. But I want you to do something special for me. You need to share that link with others because there are so many others of your contacts who need to be on tonight. You need to send them the link so that they know we are on right now. This is the place to be. For those of you who are in the physical sanctuary, I want you to do the same thing. But I know that there are others out there who need to come to be with us in the sanctuary tonight. Tonight is going to be a, sp a special night, and so you cannot afford to miss out on the worship experience tonight. And so, let's get ready. Are you ready? Well, let's sing to the honor and glory of God as our praise team lead us in another song service tonight. Let us sing until the power of God comes down. I invite those of you in the sanctuary to stand with me. Those online, we're asking you to maintain an attitude of prayer as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercies towards us. We thank you that we are here tonight to worship you again. We thank you for this end time gospel series. And as we move into this final week, God, we pray that the power of God will come down as never before. Bless us as we sing to your name's honor and glory now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us sing until the power comes down. Our praise team coming on now. And let us all sing. Sing and glorify God. All right, we go with, I want a revival in my soul. And then we branch off to come, let's magnify the Lord. I want a revival in my soul. I want a revival in my soul. I must supply to the blood of Jesus. Oh, when the glory of the Lord 
Lord is coming down. Hallelujah. When the saints begun to pray, and the Lord shall have his way, and the glory of the Lord is coming down. He sets me free. He set me free one day. He set me free. He brought the bond. He brought the bond of prison for me. Someday in glory is where I shall sing. Glory be to God. He set me free. One more time. He set me free one day. He set me free. My Jesus is to me. He's my dearest friend in everything I need. He's my rock, my shield, and I didn't play. Closer than a brother, Jesus is to me. Lay down my burden, down by the riverside. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, I'm going to lay down my burdens. Down by the riverside, I'm going to study war no more. I ain't going to study war no more. I ain't going to study war no more. I ain't going to study war no more. King of kings, nobody but my Lord. Yes, he made the world, he made the sea and land. Fasten them together with his mighty hand. On the wrist of the moon, but his command. Nobody but my Lord. Ooh, may the angels sing in Tamu. May the joy bells ring in Tamu. He's the King of kings, nobody but my Lord. Jesus' name so sweet, and every rock may rock upon Jesus. 
Jesus name so sweet oh Jesus name so sweet Emmanuel name so sweet and Jesus name so sweet Emmanuel name so sweet every rock me rock upon Jesus Jesus name so sweet every rock me rock upon Jesus Jesus name so sweet so sweet Sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. Oh, you are fairer, much fairer than the lily that grows by the way. You are precious, more precious than more. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder. Precious, more precious than gold. Tie me up for the Christian Jubilee. Why won't you write, write my name on the road? Oh, I've been changed. I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. We are inviting you all to come along. We are having a glorious start. We are going to a city where moonlight never shines. Oh, we may not know. We cannot tell if others will be there. But God himself will be your light to guide us on our way. We have Abraham and Isaac, Elijah. Jesus, I 
Mighty warrior, great Jehovah, the Prince of Peace, the one who sits high and looks low. We come to you now as we approach your throne. Though unworthy we are, Lord, as we bow our hearts before thee, we just want to thank you for your grace and your mercy that kept us thus far. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us from the wiles of the devil. As we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, knowing you are always by our side. I pray, O oh Lord, that your strength, you will strengthen us as we go through the storms of life. Help us not to grow weary, but, but just look to you, mighty King, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, we are now in our fourth week of our End Time Gospel series. Thank you for being in the midst where we see souls surrendering to you as heaven rejoice over souls won. I place the speaker in your hand, O oh God, that whatever he speaks, it is coming straight from your throne room of grace. Hide him behind the cross, Lord, and pour your Holy Spirit upon him. Give us a message, Jesus. We give us a message, Lord, to take us through the week as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night, saints. Good night, saints. It's good to be in the house of the Lord again tonight to receive a bountiful blessing. I welcome you all here tonight. For those who are online, I also welcome you. I ask you to invite a friend to listen to this end time gospel crusade because i'm sure we are blessed you will be blessed and it is good for you to invite somebody else so they will receive a blessing also tonight god be with you and god be with all of us tonight as we hear his servant speak to us welcome and welcome again It's a good time to get acquainted. So welcome to Let's all stand everyone. It's a good time to get acquainted. It's a good time to know the one is standing close beside you. Just smile and say hello. It's a good time to get acquainted. It's a good time to know the one standing close beside you. Just smile and say hello. Hello. Say goodbye to a lonesome feeling. We're happy that you're here. Yes, I'm so very glad to meet you. Just put yours right in. Good evening, everyone. I stand here this evening representing the Family Life Department, and this is our presentation with which will focus on the family in general, and more specifically, on the ideal family. 
So we need to ask ourselves the question, what is the family? They said a family is a group of two or more persons related by birth, marriage, adoption, and they live together. So birth, marriage, and adoption are the connecting links of a family. But as we know, brothers and sisters, Christian friends, there are many common types of family. We have the nuclear families. Um, this is the term, refers to a household consisting of a father, a mother, and their children dwelling together in a household, as I said. The single parent family, as the name suggests, consists of single parent, a single parent, a caregiver, and one or more dependent children without the presence of a supporting um, spouse, other spouse, in um, sharing the responsibility, or uh, the responsibilities rather, of parenting. Then we have the extended family, uh, which extends beyond the nuclear family. Um, it uh, includes um, aunts and uncles and grandparents and cousins, and we know that a lot goes on and on. And then also we have the childless family. Some persons by um, their choice, they, they want to get married and they do not want to have children. So we have the childless family. Then we have the step family, a family that consists of married couple or persons cohabiting um, with one or more children from a previous relationship. We know that persons carry um, their children from a previous um, other relationship into the family structure. And sometimes we refer to this as the blended family where we see persons, because of their coming together, they are rearing their children from different um, relationships. And then we have the grand families, where grandparents serve as a primary caregiver. <clears throat> I must speak of myself specifically, because I, and many persons like us, uh, growing up in rural Jamaica in the 60s, mid 60s, we have the um, advantage of having our parents, our biological parents around us, and our grandparents. So we, 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 we benefit from that experience. And I have fond memories of my dear departed um, grandmother. She was converted to the faith late, um, and she died at 102 years of age, and she ate everything before that. And then lastly, and most importantly, we have the family of God, in which we are glad to be a part, because we are what? We are washed in his fountain, cleansing his blood, and in spite of his omnipotence, he's an all-powerful God. In spite of his omnipresence, he's everywhere. In spite of his omnis omniscient, he's all-knowing. We can call him our father because we are his children. So those are the, the family types. So let us go quickly to what is the ideal family. The ideal family is very subjective. It depends on how you think of it and how you define it. Um, and it varies. It includes love, support, and communication. The ideal family is in terms that embodies aspirational qualities. And some persons see the nuclear family, the man and wife and children, as the ideal family. Some women, especially professional women in Jamaica, they see the single parent as the ideal because some women they just want to have a child and they, they have the material means that they can grow their child without the uh, help of a father. So we see a lot of that happening in Jamaica. We have the, the single parent family. Um, but whatever our family types, my brothers and sisters, Christian friends, whether we are part of the nuclear family, whether we are part of the single parent family, whether we are part of the extended families, the childless families, the step families, or the grandparent families, the book of Matthew chapter 23 verse 9 says, and no man, and call no man your father upon earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. We know of some denominational types where they refer to their pastor as father. The Bible is here warning us. It's one father we have and is our heavenly father. And we should only refer to our heavenly father as our father, apart from our biological father. So we know as a family, we want, the Lord wants us to be beneficiaries of this um, great commission. He wants us, takes us to heavenly places with him. And he says in John 14, verse 1 to 3, the great promise is, is that these are texts that we repeat very often. 
He said, let not your heart be troubled. He believed in God, believe also in, my, in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And here the promise. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. The Lord's wish is that we all can spend or should spend eternity with him in his heavenly kingdom. And he's not willing that any should perish, but all, not some, should come to repentance. So what will be the environment in which God's ideal family will be established? It will be an environment, my brothers and sisters, Christian friends, that will be free of sin, and it will also, also be free from sin. It will be an environment when we will be free from the guilt, the power, and the presence of sin. It will be an environment depending on, dependent rather, on justification, on sanctification, and ultimately on glorification. When we come to spend eternity with our Lord, we will be removed from the very presence of sin. And as we continue on the, along the pathway to be a part of this heavenly family, the Lord has made us a lot of promises. In Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, he says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee or forsake thee. This was the Lord's promise to the children of Israel as they camped on the east bank of the river Jordan, waiting to enter Canaan, the promised land. These promises are relevant to those today as they were to the ancient Israel because we are spiritual Israel and today we are on the banks of the heavenly Canaan waiting to go to heaven to spend eternity with our Lord. The Lord's promise to ancient Israel, as I said, is relevant to us spiritual Israel as it was to ancient Israel. And the promises continue. This is what I love very much. Isaiah 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Brothers and sisters, Christian friends. Soon the last promise in the Bible will be made manifest. And this will decide whether we are part of God's family or whether we are part of Satan's family. Let us continue to hold on to the Lord's unchanging hands. This as we walk in locked steps with him, existing in loving and obedient relationships with him as we continue along the Christian pathway, as we continue to be part of the family of God, washed in the fountain, cleansed in his blood, Joint hears with Jesus as we travel this sod. And Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 to 14, which is the last promise in the Bible. And it says, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. What will be your reward? What will be my reward? Will be, a, will be a part of Satan's family? Or will we be a part of God's family? The Lord has made us conscious creatures of choice and he wants us to be in his family and to spend eternity with him. As we enter through that figurative gate into the city, another way for sin as we go to heaven, we will spend eternity with our Lord as a family in the ceaseless ages of eternity. This must be our strivings. This must be our goals as we contemplate the messages of this end time series and beyond. May God continue to bless us. This as we strive to be a part of the family of God. Thank you. Thank you. May Lord continue to bless us all. Amen, amen, and amen. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening, visiting friends. All right. Uh, I want to do something a little bit differently this evening because I'm feeling extra generous. Yes? 
Let me see all of the visitors that are here tonight. Show of hands. All of the visitors that are here tonight. All of the visitors that are here tonight. You're a visitor and you're here and you walk with your cell phone. You walk with your cell phone, my visitor? You walk with your cell phone? I have something special for you. Anybody else? Any other visitor that is here? And you walk with your cell phone? Walk with your cell phone? My usher, please make sure that you take my visitor's name and his number. I have something special that I'm going to make sure that I get to him. Is this another visitor that is joining? Uh, you have a cell phone? Yes, we're going to take your number and I'm going to give you a very special, a very special gift. Every visitor that is here tonight and the visitor has a cell phone, they'll get something special. And I don't, it's no secret, right? What I'm giving away. What am I giving away? Credit. I'm giving away phone credit. Yes? Uh, okay. You're, you're a visitor, Sister Simone? <laughs> so make sure we get the name of all of our visitors tonight and I will be sending them some call credit. Now my second question to the visitors, is it your first time here tonight, sir? First time? Okay, not your first time. Is it your first time, my sister? First time tonight? Okay, not your first time, but we're happy to, happy to have you, happy to have you. All right. Now, we are in our very last week. Did you know that? Our very last week. So I want to spice... How are we going to know? I, I I want to spice up things a little bit, yes? So first of all, I'm going to go to the quiz in a minute. I'm going to make the questions a little bit easier. How that sound? Because a little disheartened, you know, when I, when I go to mark the quiz papers and I see how many people inside here and just very few people doing the quiz and I have enough things to give away. So I want to give away things. So I'm making it a little easier, number one. Number two, my visitors who are online or my persons viewing online, we, we, we make sure that we're not leaving you out in terms of the quiz. We create the, the link and we put it in the chat every evening. But guess what? Nobody knows the quiz online. Yeah? So we want you to participate, please. I know that you're not physically here, but I want you to participate. That's two. Number three, the person who accumulates the most points in the quiz throughout the series has a very special prize. When I get here on Wednesday, I will tell you what the standings look like because there are some people who like, like Sister Charmaine who religiously does the quiz every single night, right? And she may be in the running. So please, even if you don't get the top prize on a night, you may be in the running for that overall prize. So I'm a son, yes? So I want to give away these things this evening. All right, or during the course of this week. So let's go quickly because I know time is, is very far spent. So let's go through the questions from the last quiz. Question one says, according to the preacher, this was based on, uh, I think this was Monday evening's subject, or Sunday, sorry, Sunday evening subject, last Sunday. According to the preacher, radical people believe that the laws of God are, and the correct answer is outdated and old-fashioned. Question two, according to the preacher, the world is experiencing a crisis because of what reason? We have lost our moral compass, that is C. What is the key that's needed to create a better country? The fear of God, which is B. And according to Psalms 111, the commandments are done in truth and uprightness, that is A. And question 5 said, according to the preacher, God's law is, an, is as everlasting as himself because it represents the, lo the laws represent his character. Now, everybody has a piece of paper because everybody's going to do the quiz tonight. Yes? Everybody, Sister, Sister, Sister Nadine, Sister Charmaine, Sister McLean, make sure everybody has a piece of paper. If you don't have a piece of paper, put your hand up in the air and we will give you a piece of paper. Come, question one. Question one says, the scripture of emphasis, this was based on the presentation that was done on Wednesday night, was... Matthew 7, 24, verse 20, Matthew 7, verses 24 to 27, or Matthew 24, 4 to 7, or Matthew 27, 24 to 27, or Matthew 4, 24 to 27. Which one is the correct answer? All I can tell you, it came from the book of Matthew. Right? It came from the book of Matthew. All right. Question number two. This one is the easiest question you've ever heard me give. Question two. The division of the books in the Bible are as follows. 
38 in the Old Testament and 28 in the New, 40 in the Old and 26 in the New, 39 in the Old and 27 in the New, or 37 in the Old and 29 in the New. I'll give you a clue. Can I give you a clue? All of them add up to 66, because there are 66 books in the Bible. Amen? Amen and amen. So all you need to know is how much is in one, and then you know how much is in the other. All right. Question three. Remember, remember Wednesday night's presentation. It was, what was it called? Don't tell me. Write down the answer. Be careful of where you build. A tale of two builders, unless the Lord builds or build on the rock. Right? What was the subject for Wednesday night, last week Wednesday night? Now, I said I gave the easiest question, Brother Neil, earlier, but I top that because this is going to be the easiest, easiest ever question now. Question four. It is easy to tell the difference between the two houses. Remember the two houses in the story? So the question is, it is easy to tell the difference between the two houses by just looking from the outside. True or false? A or B. So just write that on your paper. This is the easiest, easiest easiest question ever it's easy to tell the difference between the two houses by just looking from the outside remember the story from wednesday evening right all right and the last question says now listen to this one carefully listen to this one carefully listen to this one carefully all the statements below are true about the two houses except one so which one is which one is false that's what that's the one i want you to tell me right is it that the houses were built in relatively close proximity to each other? Is it that the houses were built in the same country? Is it that the houses are built in disaster-prone area? Or is it that the houses were built with distinctly different materials? So all of the statements are true of the two houses except one statement. So tell me which of the statements is false. Boy, the quiz was easy tonight. I when I come up here on, on tomorrow night, I'm going to tell everybody online included that everybody were winners. I look forward to marking the papers. Thank you very much. Enjoy the evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good night, everyone. It's night time for our offering. But before our offering, we will have a special by Brother Malcolm. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Father God, as we come tonight to give what you have given back to us, your Heavenly Father, we ask, Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless us. Remember those who may not have known, you continue to bless them also. Be with us as we go through, in Jesus' name, amen. We'll have the ushers as they come forward. Good night, everyone. Good night, Constant Spring. How are you tonight? Blessed and highly favored. Isn't God good? Oh, yeah. For me, I can only say, to God be the glory. Great things he has done.
Jesus Christ never fails me yet. Oh, when we wear I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ never fails me yet. He never fails me yet. He never fails me yet. Jesus Christ has never fails. church say amen. amen amen good evening everybody uh, let, we can do better than that good evening everyone are you happy to be in the house of worship this evening if you're happy to be here just lift your hand and say praise the lord say thank you jesus yes now turn to the person close to you Smile with that person and tell that person I love you and Jesus loves you too. Just give a word of greeting. Yes, 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 yes. It's good to be here once again and we uh, want to welcome all those who are here tonight uh, on this, the first night of the fourth week of this end time gospel series. And we have been having a wonderful time since we started and uh, especially since I've been able to be with you uh, over this, these few uh, moments. And we had a wonderful time on yesterday as we came together in, in worship. So I want to welcome all of you, all our visitors who are here this evening. Uh, those who are online viewing, we also welcome you um, to this program and we know that the blessings that we are seeking within the precincts of this building, you will also uh, receive it. What do you say? Let me see the end of my visitors tonight. Yes. Oh yeah, I see those hands and I know you were here yesterday, right? Or, the, or, or you're here on Wednesday night. Yes, uh, so we welcome you um, to church um, tonight. Well, uh, we're going to go straight into the word tonight because we have a baptism tonight. Yesterday we, we had a baptism. We celebrated with those um, five precious candidates um, who surrendered their lives to the Lord. And tonight also, we have persons uh, who are saying, I want to go all the way uh, with Jesus Christ. All right. So we're going to go straight to work tonight. Again, I invite you to stand. I know you've been sitting for a little while. Stand um, as we read from the word of God tonight. My first text, I'm going to read two texts of scripture um, tonight. The first one comes to us from Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 and I'm going to be reading a few verses in your hearing starting at verse number 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1 starting at verse 4 and then I'm going to read Titus chapter 2 verses 11 through uh, 15. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse number 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? 
And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And he shall be my witnesses, witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Titus, Titus chapter 2. Timothy, Titus. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to some men. All right, you're with me. To all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in when? In this present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. This is the word of the living God. Uh, tonight I've chosen to talk to you on the subject, reading the signs correctly. Are you reading the signs correctly? Bow your heads with me as we pray. Gracious God and our Father, thank you for the day you gave to us and all that we were able to accomplish by your power. We thank you for preserving us from all accidents and danger, from the evil one who would want to snuff us out. And so you brought us together tonight in your presence. And so as I open your words, I pray once again like I've always prayed, that you, O oh God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will take full control of this message. Take full control of the messenger. And please, Lord, take full control over those who will listen to this message. Take glory and give it only to Jesus. And when we leave this place, Father, may we be able to say, we have heard the voice of God. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The, the season was autumn. The month was October. The day, 22 and the year 1844. You can check and it's, almost, it's over 100 plus years ago. 1844. That an eclectic group of people came together, huddled together in prayer and Bible study. And after intense Bible study came to the conclusion that Jesus Christ would be coming to earth that same year. They sold what needed to be sold. They gave away what needed to be given away in earnest anticipation of probably of the greatest climactic event this world will ever see, the coming of Jesus Christ. So earnest was their waiting and their anticipating the coming uh, that they went about and did nothing else but spread this good news of the coming of Jesus Christ. They went from place to place heralding this message. As a matter of fact, uh, they went uh, someplace 
in the New England territory where the place was covered in ice. And as they preached the gospel, uh, they dug a baptismal pool out of the ice and decided and they continued to baptize group after group after group of people. Well, it so happened that the baptizer caught pneumonia and was about to die. Huddled around his bedside was that faithful Advent group that was eroling along with him the soon coming of Jesus Christ. This was just a few days to the fulfillment of 1844. On his deathbed, the preacher said to the, the waiting group, I am going to die, but I will see you in a few days. Brothers and sisters, it has been over a century that we have been looking now. They got the revelation of what they were expecting, that Jesus was not coming to earth physically in 1844, but he was beginning another phase of ministry, which is the investigative judgment. Are we together? It, and it has been over a century. Not only that, the apostles hear what they said to Jesus in Acts chapter 1. Uh, as they came together after the resurrection and Jesus was about to go. And Jesus said to them, you're going to tarry here and wait for the promise that was promised to you of my father. Surely you have been baptized by water, but you will all... You are going to be baptized by my father with Holy Ghost power. Would you say amen? He shall receive power. But before that, they said to him, well, Jesus, are you about to restore the kingdom and give it to Israel, your people? Because remember their, th their thought why Jesus came to this earth, that he was to break the backbone of the Roman Empire, set up an earth earthly kingdom and have them as prince and princesses in his kingdom. But Jesus had already told them, my kingdom is not of this world, else would my servant fight. So Jesus was about another agenda. But they were still with the earthly agenda. Are you going to now set up the kingdom and give it unto us? And Jesus' response to them was this. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father hath placed in his own power. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and in the utmost part of the world. I am going to give you power to preach the good news. I am going to give you power to declare to the nation that Jesus came, died, and rose again, and will be coming back. As a matter of fact, when Jesus said this, the Bible said that they beheld and he was taken up from them, ascending into heaven. And as they stood gazing, men in shining apparel came to them and said, listen, why you are standing gazing away into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you will come in like manner as you see him go into heaven. And the Bible said a cloud received him out of their sight. Brothers and sisters, I am here to declare to you on the authority of God's word that Jesus is coming again. Don't get it twisted. Don't get confused. Yes, there will be mockers and scoffers. Yes, they will tell you, ever since our fathers fell asleep, we have been looking for the promise. But brothers and sisters, God is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but he is long-suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God has pulled out all the stops to save us. 
And he is still coming. The coming of Jesus stands as the greatest promise that warms the Christian heart. How cheering is the Christian's hope. While toiling here below, it buoys us up while passing through this wilderness of woe. Oh, brothers and sisters, the Lord is coming again. And you know the devil, the devil hates the promise of the second coming. And because he hates it and because he knows that it has detrimental implication to him he has sought to sow erroneous doctrines around the promise of the second coming uh, that some will tell you that one Jesus is here already that he's somewhere in the Middle East as a matter of fact they'll tell you that at the end of World War II he is here I've lived long enough I didn't know that I would live long enough to see Men coming on television to declare that they are the Christ. I've seen it many times. Many times they come and say, I am the Christ. But, 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 and, and, and then there are those who said that Jesus is going to rapture the church. He's going to rapture the church. Ah, uh, you're going you're gonna to wake up one morning and uh, turn over and feel an empty space because your spouse will be taken and you're left. <laughs> you're going to be flying in an aircraft and all of a sudden, the pilot is snatched away. And you have to contend with with a pilotless aircraft. Because people have sown all these erroneous teachings and erroneous doctrines. The devil has allowed these erroneous teachings uh, to persuade people. And some say that uh, we're looking for a white man to come from the sky to save us. I listened to one guy and he said, listen, you Christians... You, 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 are, you have a pie in the sky mentality. You, 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 you are looking for a white man with blue eyes to come and rescue you. And he says, you're not going anywhere. He says, don't look. He says, you're only lot in this world. And this was what he says. Your only lot in this world is to eat some good food, drink some good juice, uh, have some good sex, have a lot of children, because that is your that is your lot and when I said to the, the gentleman but Jesus says in John 14 let not your hearts be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there he may be also. The man said to me, so who got the contract to build those mansions? And, and he continues to, to say to me, but, but I don't see any mixing truck going up there. I don't hear any noise of construction happening up there. Who got the contract? Is it, is it Astrom? Uh, is it NHT that is up there building those mansions? But, 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 but I pity that man. I pity his ignorance. Because you see, he doesn't know that the God who created this world, the, 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 the scholars call it ex nihilo. He created it out of nothing. He spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. He formed the worlds, formed the moons, the stars, formed the planets, formed the universe out of nothing. And the same God who did it before can do it again. There is no secret what God can do. Can somebody say amen? So I pity that man's ignorance. And there are those who will scoff at the promise who will mock the promise but God he's not slack concerning his promises 
My question to you tonight is, are you reading the signs correctly? For I don't want you to, want you to be on either extreme of the pendulum. You see some people, as anything happens, if a plane crashes, well, God is coming tomorrow. If anything happens in the United States, the Sunday law is about to be passed. And I'm not saying it ain't going to be passed, but let us not be fanatical about some of these things. We ought to read the signs correctly. You see, Jesus gave us the signs of his coming in Matthew. Matthew 24 and we can read it because we have heard it over and over again there shall be wars and rumors of wars pestilences earthquakes in divers places men's heart will be failing them for fear and fear from the things that are happening he says to us that there will be famine and pestilence and all these things will happen just before he comes are we reading the signs correctly? And somebody says, well, pastor, these things has always been happening. Well, true, but with the intensity of these happenings, we know that something of a climactic event is soon to happen. When, when a former president who is, who is a bigot by nature can have the nerve to come back after uh, encouraging an insurrection against the Capitol building. If he can run for president again, we know that God is coming. <laughs> when a man can look at a baby and kill that baby, we know that God is on his way. We know that time will not last much longer time will soon change into eternity can somebody say amen we ought to read the signs correctly we ought to watch and be ready with our lamps trimmed and burning watchman what of the night watchman what say you of the night well the night cometh the day cometh and then the night and we must work the work of him before it's night. Would you say amen? So we have to do what needs to be done. Jesus says and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in Matthew 24 and 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. All the other signs have been fulfilled in all their intensities. There is but one, one more sign that will herald the coming of Jesus. And with the aid of technology it can't be long because the preaching of the gospel is being circulated by the three angels of Revelation 14. Every cubic and corner of this universe is leering and is learning that Jesus Christ is coming again. That his law is still binding upon all creation. That he's still the Lord of the seventh day Sabbath. Will you say amen? That wine is still a mocker. Strong drink is raging. That Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That the beast, the beast whose deadly wound was healed is trying to resurge its power. And so brothers and sisters, it is for us to watch and be ready. Be watchful and, and wait. And so the erroneous teachings... You know, the secret, secret rapture. And we know that when Jesus comes back again, it will not be a secret. What secret? When the sound of the archangel will sound so loud that it bursts the tombs open. The mossy hole graves where the pilgrims sleep shall be opened as wide as before. 
and the millions who sleep in the mighty deep shall live on this earth once more. Not when island chains are disappearing and the sea give up their dead and not when the, the earth is reeling like a drunken man. It won't be a secret because he shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with a trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. No secret. He will not be tiptoeing in and tiptoeing out. The Bible says in Revelation 1 and verse 7, He cometh with clouds, and all those who pierce him, every eye shall see him, and especially those who pierce him. Oh, Jesus says, listen, it won't be a secret because as the lightning flash from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Hear me, the coming of Jesus will be visible for all the world to see. No matter where you are in this world or in this universe, you will know that he is coming. It will be visible for all to see. Then it will be audible. Because this trumpet will wake the dead. The righteous dead. And hear me. If you come up in the second resurrection. You're one resurrection late. If you get up from your grave. And you see somebody resembling Hitler. Game over. If you get up and you see somebody resembling Saddam Hussein. Or Muhammad Gaddafi. You're one resurrection late. Game over. But blessed and holy is he that hath part. In the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. That's why I am making my reservation. For my final destination. I'm going to be taking my vacation. In mansions in the skies. Can somebody say Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, we ought to be ready for this great climactic and majestic event. The coming of Jesus will be visible. All the world will see it. It will be audible. People will hear about it. Would you say amen? And thirdly, the coming of Jesus will be personal. All of us must stand before the judgment bar of God to give an account of how we have lived our lives. Every soul must seek and then decide which road he or she must travel, the narrow or the wide. There are only two ways, God way or the other way. Would you say amen? There is no middle ground. There is no fence on which the bird can sit. It's either you are for God or you're against him. Can you say amen? It will be visible, audible, and personal. And each day, the signs are telling us that Jesus is coming soon. We can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sound the call. We can hear the rumbling of the chariot wheels as Jesus rides down the milky white way to claim his righteous saints. And so, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection over such the second death has no power. And even if the cold and icy hands of death should touch you, Paul reminds us in Corinthians 15, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible hath put on incorruption and the mortal hath put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh death, 
where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Friends of mine, one of these days, death will finally lose its power. Death itself will die. And life will reign throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Are you reading the signs correctly? Are you reading the signs correctly? Look for the way marks. I'm a priest Daniel too now. Look for the way marks as you journey on. Look for the way marks passing one by one down through the ages past the kingdoms for where are we standing? Look the way marks saw first the Assyrian kingdom ruled the world then Medo-Persia banners were unfurled then after Greece held universal sway Rome sees the scepter where are we today? Down in the feet of iron and of clay, weak and divided, soon to pass away. What will the next great glorious drama be? Christ and his coming and eternity. Look for the way marks, the blessed way marks, down through the ages, past the kingdoms for. Look for the way marks, the journey. I said the journey, the journey is almost or can somebody say amen? Friends of mine, there are three reasons why Jesus has to come back to earth. Number one, he has to come back because he said he would. And his promises are surer than sunrise tomorrow morning and more stronger than the rock of Gibraltar. You can take it to the bank. John 14, 1 to 3, let not your hearts be troubled. He believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are not few but many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. Now the question is, is he gone? Is he gone? Come on, shout yes. Is he gone? Because the last time we looked... Uh, below the place of the skull, called in the Hebrew tongue Golgotha, uh, at that wound out uh, rock uh, where it was a brand new tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. The last time we checked, there is a sign at the, the mouth of the tomb. He is not here, he is risen. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fears are gone. Because I know who holds the future. And life is worth a living just because he lives. Brothers and sisters, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. Whatever man may say, I hear his voice of mercy. I feel his hands of cheer and just the time I need him. He's always there. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. That's why the songwriter says, I need no other evidence. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and rose again for me. I say he's gone. Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing? This same Jesus that is taken up from you will come in like manner as you see him going to heaven. He's coming back because he said he would. And he's, going to, he's, he's not going to go back on his promise. His promises are sure. Second reason why he's coming. He's coming back to give rewards. However you live your life, you're going to get a reward. Either a reward for life eternal or a reward for eternal damnation. You see... The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Good intentions will not take you there. And a lot of good people are going to go to hell. A lot of nice people are going to go to hell. 
Are you listening to me? Because of this one word, procrastination. Procrastination is the thief of time. It will rob heaven of its most precious jewels and it will populate hell. Procrastination. Procrastination. He's coming back to give rewards. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 to 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the old duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. He's coming back to give reward. Uh, Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Now hear me, I've seen a lot of people who get hangry if they have served the church, if they have done some good deeds for the church and nobody said anything nice about them, they get angry because they are working for reward, at best for earthly reward. If, if, you, not, if you never give them a certificate or a little plaque with their names on it and a citation, they get angry. I've seen people leave the church and say, oh, I'm leave. And they, they don't know what gift they have. And they don't know. As a matter of fact, one lady, she wasn't returned as treasurer. And she left the church and went to another one. And while she was leaving, she cursed out the church that they are ungrateful and they don't know. They believing that the church is hers or the position is hers. Well, let me tell you something, honey. The church is not hers, yours. The business of the church is not yours. The church is God's church. And listen to me, if they never give you a bouquet of flowers, if they never have your names up in neon lights, if they never give you a plaque, if they never say anything good about you and you have served in the church, don't worry. The church is not a place to praise you. The church is not a place to reward you. This is an organization to praise the name of God. And God says, behold, I'm coming quickly. And my reward is with me. Don't work for her the reward. Work not as men please us. But work to please God. Would you say men? Because he ultimately, hear me. Promotion comes not from the east. Nor from the west. Come not back. Promotion comes back from God. And even though they might be trying to suppress you. And press you down. God will pull strings in high places. They'll watch you elevated and don't know what to do. God will spread a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And the good thing I like about God is that he'll keep your enemies alive so, uh, to see you being elevated. Don't let your haters be. Don't fight your own battles. Let God fight your battles for you. For when God fights for you, you will never lose. Let me get this thing on the way. So, he's coming back to give reward. Uh, the final, and I think, and I would so, surmise that the most important reason. Yes, he's coming back because he said he would. That's, that's, that's a given. He's coming back to give reward. Yes, whether you work for him or against him, you'll get your reward. And it will be a just reward. Even the devil and his angels will have to say, just and true are your ways. But the third and final reason, and the greatest among them all, is coming back for me. Turn to somebody and tell them, he's coming back for me. You got to be selfish about this thing now. He's coming back. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, and I don't know who you're waiting for, but he's coming back for me. Are you listening to me? He has done all that is possible pull out all the stops in order to save me. He has sent heaven's best gift to die so that I might walk through those pearly gates. For when Jesus died, the pearly gates were unlatched and swung wide open on their inches of grace. And it's grace that brought me safe thus far and grace that will lead me home. He's coming back for me. He has done everything that I might be saved. 
pulled out all the stops that I might be saved, that I might hear from his lips, well done, good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Brothers and sisters, hear me. He is coming back because he said he would. He is coming back to give rewards, but he is coming back for me because I heard somebody say, the last time we saw Jesus, he was dying on a cross between two thieves. But the next time we see him, he will be riding down the milky white way with a retinue of angels. 10,000 times 10,000 and a thousand of thousand. The last time we heard him, his quivered lips uttered, my God, my God, why? But the next time we hear the voice of our Savior, his voice will be like the voice of many waters saying to the north give up and to the south hold not back but bring up all my sons from the ends of the earth and my daughters from afar oh the last time we saw him he had a crown of thorns pressed to his skull but the next time we see our savior he will be wearing a royal crown the last time we saw him, his clothes were tattered and torn and they did cast lots. But the next time we see him, he will be wearing a royal robe. The last time I saw Jesus, his eyes were tired and lonely. But the next time we see him, John says his eyes will be like flaming fire. The last time we saw him, his hair was sun-baked and dry. But the next Next time we see him, John says his hair will be like pure wool. The last time we saw him, his feet was nailed to a cross. But the next time we see him, John says his feet are like burning brass. The last time we see Jesus, he was dying. But the next time we see him, he's a risen savior. What a day that will be. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in the song with sweet accord and thus surround the throne. We are marching to Zion. Beautiful. Marching upward to Zion. Beautiful city of God. Oh, friends of mine, just over the mountain is the promised land. Lies the holy city built by God's own hands. Has our weary footsteps grazed the mountain's crest. We can view our homeland of eternal rest. Oh, we are nearing home. We are nearing home. And we got to be ready. Hear me. It may be at morn. When the day is awaking, when sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus will come in the fullness of glory to receive from this world his own. It may be at midday, it may be at twilight, it may be perchance that the blackness of midnight will burst into light with the blaze of his glory when Jesus receives his own. Oh joy, oh delight, should we go without dying. No sickness, no sadness, no dread and no crying. Caught up through the clouds with our Lord into glory when Jesus receives his own. Oh Lord Jesus, how long? How long? Here we shout the glad song. Christ returneth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He is coming. And he is coming to claim his own. Those who were attacked by death but die in Christ will live again. There will be a grand reunion and those of us who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds. And so shall we be with our Lord throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. I want to be there. I want to see Jesus to look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. 
let me lift my voice. Cares all pass. Home at last. Evermore to rejoice. If it is your committed desire that you want to be ready. You know, I have heard a lot of people saying, what God not going to take in world and done? Have you ever heard that before? I heard that so many times. But hear me. The song says, are you ready for Jesus to come? Are you ready to stand in your place? Can you look up and say, this is my God. Are you ready for Jesus to come? If it is your committed desire tonight that you want to be ready as we get ready for this baptism. I want to see everybody standing to their feet. I want to see everybody standing to their feet. I want to be there. I want to anchor fast my faith in Jesus Christ so that when he comes, I will hear from his loving lips, well done, good and faithful servant. Oh, brothers and sisters, my, my heart's desire is that all of us standing in this sanctuary, all of us indicating in the affirmative, will meet on the sea of glass, where we'll meet never to part again, when we will sit around the throne of God, that great white throne, and we'll sing holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. And then we'll reign with him forever. This is my desire for you. This is the desire for myself as we get ready for the greatest climactic event that this world will ever see. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the promise of the blessed hope. We thank you that this world will not continue as it is going, that wicked will not reign forever, that wrong though sit on the throne, right ever strapped up to the scaffolds, Yet, it is that scaffold that sways the future. And God in the dim unknown is always watching over his own. We're happy that this world is not in the hands of men, but this world is in the hands of God. That this world is not being orchestrated by the whim and fancy of men, but this world has an agenda and it's God's agenda. We thank you that no matter what the superpowers of this earth may say, history have reminded us that empires come and crumble, empires rise and wane, yet the everlasting God and his kingdom will last forever throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. Oh, Father, we thank you, and so we commit ourselves to you, and we say, right on, King Jesus, in power and in majesty, right on. We say, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. Rescue us from this earth. But may our hearts be ready to meet you in peace. And we will be able to look up and say, this is our God. We have long waited for him and he has come to save us. We thank you for the precious soul that will be baptized tonight and the many others who will be surrendering to you. We thank you for those who have surrendered their lives to you and went all the way in the watery grave of baptism. I pray, God, that you will just direct their steps and guide their way until they reach Jerusalem's arbor and they will anchor shore on that beautiful and that celestial shore. So we thank you. Be with the baptism. Be with the baptizer, be with the candidate. And as we look on, may we recommit our lives once again, knowing that we know where we are going and who we are going to see. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all who believe God say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated, everybody. We're going straight into our baptism at this time. Pastor is coming forward. Indeed, we are blessed tonight to 
let you know that we have a candidate for baptism. Indeed, we are here to encourage persons to give their hearts entirely over to Jesus Christ. And tonight, we want to introduce to you this special candidate. And we are going to be asking Sister Juliet Richardson to stand at this time. Indeed, the board has met and we are recommending her for baptism. We are recommending her to be a part of the membership here at Constant Spring SDA Church. Sister Richards, and you notice I'm calling you sister already because indeed your mind is made up and indeed there is no turning back because you want to see your Jesus someday. We're going to be asking you the alternative vows, three questions. We have gone through the pledge card with Sister Richards, son, and indeed she understands and have believed indeed that she, by God's grace, will keep that which she has pledged to do. So, Sister Juliette, I'm going to ask you to answer in the affirmative by raising your right hand if you are in agreement with these vows at the end of each statement. And when she would have done that, my brothers, my sisters, please cheer her on by saying amen. Question number one. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord? And do you desire to live your life in a saving relationship with him? Amen. Do you accept the teachings of the Bible as expressed in the statement of fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you pledge by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these teachings? Amen. Do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ, to be accepted into the fellowship of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and to support the church and its mission as a faithful steward by your personal influence, tithe and offering, and a life of service? Amen, amen. Brethren, we have seen Sister Juliette answer to the affirmative to all three questions. Is there a motion from a member of the Constant Spring SDA Church that Sister Juliette be accepted as a member subject to her baptism? Amen. It has been moved, has been seconded. All those who are in favor, please show by your uplifted right hand. Sister Juliette, I just want you to turn around and just look at all those who are welcoming you into the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Still turn around, still turn around. Amen. Please put your hands down now. Those who are opposing Sister Juliet, please show by the same sign. Indeed, it is carried. You can turn around now. None have opposed you. Praise God for that. I'm going to be inviting the church now to stand at this time as we place Sister Juliet into the care and keeping of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as she prepares to be immersed in through baptism. Shall we pray? Great God, we are grateful for the fact that you are still saving souls. O oh Lord, we are grateful for Sister Richardson, even at this time. She is saying today and demonstrating that she is leaving the world behind and she is coming to you, great God. We thank you, Lord, for the decision that she has made. And we ask you that you allow angels that excel in strength and power to be with her, to guide her, Lord, as she moves around even in this world. Oh, Lord, we are grateful for the fact that the Holy Spirit has spoken to her heart and allow her, Lord, to decide that comes what may she is willing to place her hands into the hands of Jesus Christ so that he can lead her on bless her now we ask 
As we celebrate with our great God, we ask you to allow heaven truly to rejoice at Sister Juliet's return to you. Oh, great God, we ask you now that you will be with her. That, Lord, as she take that stand in the water, that, great God, she will look to Calvary and she will recognize that indeed she is saved through God. Faith in you, Jesus Christ, truly because of your grace. Oh, Father, we ask you now that, Lord, you will bless even the baptizer, Pastor Steele, that as he administer this aspect, that, Lord, heaven truly will come down and glory will fill our souls. Lord, we ask you that you will allow Sister Juliet, that as she leave the pool, Lord, she will recognize that indeed Jesus Christ has truly died for her and that, Lord, she will, will be willing to ensure that she becomes a new creation through Jesus Christ. So bless now the process we ask and we allow that those who are witnessing, Lord, who are still in the valley of decision, that they too will make up their mind to be joined with Jesus Christ. Bless us now to the very end we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite the praise team to come and to assist us with a few songs as we prepare for the baptism. I've got my mind laid on so I won't turn back. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back. Because I want to see my Jesus someday. So goodbye, world. I say no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Oh, goodbye world. Oh, I stay no longer with you. Goodbye pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Oh, fire, 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 fire fall on me. Oh, fire, 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 fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. On the day of Pentecost. Fire fall on me. So fire, 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 fire. Fire fall on me. Yes. Fire, fire, fire. Oh, fire, fire fall on me. Oh. On the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. Oh, on the day of Pentecost, fire fall on me. I'm a new creation. Oh.
I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Amen. What a wonderful experience tonight to witness the death, burial, and resurrection of another soul for the kingdom of God. We just want to praise God for her. And we pray that as she continue on this journey, that you not take her eyes off Jesus, but that she continue to be a disciple for Christ, telling others of the love of Jesus Christ. So my dear sister Juliet, the profession of your faith in your Lord and your Savior Jesus Christ, as the minister of the gospel, do not baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Oh, born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. I am born of the water, the spirit, and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. I am born of the water, the spirit, and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. Thank God I'm born again. I am born of the water, the spirit, and the blood. Thank God I'm born again. It is always a beautiful experience to witness a baptism. But it is also very uh, compelling when someone sees a baptism who they themselves have not been baptized. And uh, want to say, Jesus, one day I want to follow your footsteps. And so it is an opportunity for those persons who are not yet baptized. But you want to say, please pray for me tonight that by God's grace, who knows, maybe very soon, I too will take my stand with Jesus Christ. So if there is such a person here this evening, could you just raise your hand wherever you are? You're not yet baptized, but you hope to very soon, one day. Just raise your hand. So that Evan, all right, I see a hand down the bottom there. Is there another hand? Just raise those hands so that Evan can witness and care about today the good news that you have demonstrated by the uplifting of your hands that you too want to be with Jesus when he comes the second time. So is there one more? Is there another? All right. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your mercies and your love. We thank you for the experience you have given to us this evening to witness another resurrection watery burial and resurrection we thank you lord for the witnessing of this and we pray lord that those who have not yet committed their lives to jesus christ will do so before it is too late we ask dear god that you will continue to bless this series as we are in the last final week we ask God that you will help those who are still in the valley of indecision to make up their minds, dear God. Speak to them, whether it be by dreams or visions or whatever experience, dear God, you choose to uh, give to them. We pray that they may listen to your voice and that they may not harden their heart, but that they will say yes to Jesus and no to the world. May you continue to bless our effort as we go through this week. May we have a good experience with you, Lord, and thank you for what you have done so far. Take us home safely now, God, and bring us back tomorrow night if it's your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
It is all right, all right. It is all right, all right. As long as of my Lord beside me, it is all right. As long as I am his hands to hold, as long as he. It is all right, and what a night we have had tonight as we celebrated Jesus one more time. We thank those of you who joined us online, and we thank you for staying with us all through the service, even right up to this baptism that we are, have ended with tonight. We saw you, Sister Tanisha Reed from the states you were with us tonight we saw you sister deborah williams um uh we saw you there oh from west milan joining us and the many others who joined tonight online we appreciated your being here with us tomorrow night we'll do it all over again we are going to be here celebrating jesus and we ask you to Bring a friend with you. Tell a friend about this service that is happening here. It's the end time gospel series. And you can't afford to miss out. Because this is our final week. And we want for everyone to join with us in this final stretch. God bless you as you go tonight. Troublesome times are here. Filling men's heart with fear. Let's sing as we go. Trouble sometimes are here, feelings and hearts we fear, freedom we all are there, now it's best thing, humble your heart to God, free from the chasing rod. Seek the way, pilgrim trot, Christ and the way. Oh, my Jesus is coming soon, morning or night.